Are you curious about these battery adapters that go from one battery brand to another tool brand? Well, let's take a look at things you need to consider and ways that you can modify this to make it more practical. Originally, I bought this adapter in a kit with a Surebonder hot glue gun. The hot glue gun is made for Ryobi batteries and they're selling it in a kit with this adapter. They make three different kinds of this adapter. So you can go Makita to Ryobi, Dewalt to Ryobi, and Milwaukee to Ryobi. So how practical are these things? The first thing you need to know is, is that there is no low voltage cutoff circuitry in this adapter. There is a warning on here. Do not allow battery to drain completely. Doing so may cause permanent damage. When you put this in a Ryobi tool, the Ryobi tool doesn't have the red lithium technology or the fuel or whatever the Milwaukee is calling the circuitry that saves and protects the battery from over discharge. You can hear it slowing down there. Okay, so there it stops. Yeah, and it won't turn on. So it's so it's still a dead battery and it's running it. There's a way to solve the problem. So on the internet, there are available low voltage cutoff circuit boards. They're just they're pre-made little circuit boards that come out of China. Uh, they usually don't come with instructions on how to set them which is something I will show you how to do in this video if you're interested in this. So this is what I did. I added this. So normally this adapter is just two wires and that's it. I cut the wires, I spliced in longer 18 gauge wire, I used ferrules, on the ends here of the wires, I was going to tin the leads, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to use ferrules. I got the ferrules. I got the crimper. They make things a lot neater. And you've got in and out so that this end is the output that's labeled V out on the board. And then V in, of course, is the Milwaukee battery going in here. And then setting it. If you do a long press on this first button, it will start to blink. And then each button becomes an up and a down. And this one I set to 17.6 uh, volts. And that is not done using a calculation. That was done by just running a Milwaukee battery down to one light left on the battery so that even a Milwaukee tool did not consider this dead. And I used that voltage reading off of these two plus and minus with a voltmeter. And that voltage reading is what I used for the low voltage cutoff so that there's a margin of safety built in. So this will do a low voltage cutoff sooner than a Milwaukee tool will. So then to save the setting, you just wait. You do nothing, it will stop blinking, and it will go solid, and then that is the setting, and it will remember it. It doesn't need any electricity plugged into it. It will remember the setting. And then you can do a long press on the second button, and it will show a number. The default, as it was shipped, was two, and that, no that number represents the number of volts that this battery has to increase by before it will turn the output back on. Okay, so I left that at two and that seemed to work pretty well. So when it gets to the low cutoff voltage, it cuts the power. And then typically what happens is you get, you get some sort of like a bounce effect. You can, you can turn the Ryobi tool off, you can turn it back on, and it will run it a little bit more, and then it'll cut off again because it senses like a two volt increase. Oh, and it turned off. Okay, so it turned off that one dot by itself. I hope I got that on camera, but it did it. So I'm gonna take this battery out. So if this if it senses that this battery is two volts more, it'll run. Okay. Now it'll 
And there, there's my low voltage cutoff. And of course, if you put a fresh battery, a fully charged fresh Milwaukee battery in there, it will of course sense that it's more than two volts over the cutoff voltage and it will turn on and it will run. All right, so that's what, and, and I didn't, you can see I didn't use any double stick tape. I didn't use any hot glue. This just happens to set in here in such a way that it's snug. Um, this just barely presses on the top. Okay, there we go. So that just fits in there like that. Okay, so that closes up nice. On the nine amp hour battery, the 17.6 volt cutoff might be a little bit high. The low voltage cutoff is happening at two bars on a nine amp hour battery. 17.6 is very, very safe. It's only gonna run a nine amp hour battery down to two bars. It's gonna run a five amp hour battery down to one solid bar. Um, I don't know what it's going to do on a 12 amp hour battery. Those have different cells in them. If you're heavily invested in Milwaukee, that's all you've got. You just want to use that one odd tool. Well, this is perfect for that as it's sold with no voltage, no low voltage cutoff because it's so intermittent in the draw on the battery that you're not really risking damaging the battery that much. You have to be careful and, you know, check the, check the status of the battery and not let it get over discharged. I found it interesting that I could actually, you know, revive my old Panasonic saw, but it happens to fit into this one and it's you know it's pretty ridiculous but then the other thing that occurred to me is is that the Ryobi battery also fits in here you know this has all kind of been a curiosity and in a little electronics project and you know I've got this if I need it I can open this up I can change that cutoff voltage if I want to Will I ever actually use this? Uh, yeah, but probably not very often. I mean, I'm invested into Ryobi and Milwaukee ecosystems, and Ryobi has excellent batteries, 6 amp hour, 9 amp hour. So the practicality is really kind of a case-by-case -case basis, and what I've shown you in this video are the things that you need to know and the things that you can consider when trying to figure out if this has any practical value for you at all. So that's my video on this Surebonder battery adapter. Thank you for watching.